So this unit is all about probability distributions. So what we want to do in this first lesson here is figure out what exactly is a proper probability distribution and what are some of the properties of probability distributions in general that we can use when we are using them to calculate probabilities. So the first question first. Up until now, uh, we've been calculating probabilities, but we've been calculating probabilities for particular outcomes of an experiment. Okay? So for instance, if a six-sided die is rolled, that's our experiment, rolling the die, and we would ask questions like, what is the probability of rolling a four? Well, rolling a four is a particular outcome of this particular experiment. So we would say something like, okay, the probability of rolling a four was the number of ways that we could roll a four divided by the number of things in our sample space and the number of ways we can roll a four if we're just rolling one die is one the number of possible rolls is six so we would say that the probability of this particular outcome or this particular event is one out of six a probability distribution takes this kind of calculation and extends it a little bit a probability distribution shows the probability of all of the possible outcomes of an experiment so let's go back to the same example. A die is rolled. Our probably, we have to think f first about what are all of the possible outcomes of this experiment. Well, we could have, um, let's just set this up in a table here, okay? We could have, what the outcomes are the different numbers that are gonna show up on the, the top of our die here. So we could have a one, we could have a two, we could have a three, a four, a five, or a six. And for each one of these possible outcomes, let's just label these things as, um, these are our possible outcomes. From, you know, here to here. For each of these things, we want to figure out what is the probability of this outcome, okay? And we don't know which outcome we're talking about, so I'm just going to put a, an X in there. So X just means whichever outcome we're interested in. So whichever of these six outcomes. This is just some outcome. Well, let's see. We already know one of these things. We know the probability of rolling a four is one-sixth. What is the probability of rolling a one? Hmm. It's also one-sixth. What is the probability of rolling a two? Also one-sixth. And so on. And so on. And so on. So in this particular experiment, all of our outcomes are equally likely. They all have an equal probability here, one-sixth. So this is an example of a probability distribution. Um, it's not a particularly interesting one, okay, because all the probabilities are exactly the same, but it does have a special name. It is often called the uniform probability distribution. Because the probabilities or the individual probabilities are uniform across the distribution. So we often represent probability distributions in tables. The other way we frequently represent them is using graphs. So we could make a graph of, uh, sort of a bar graph of outcomes along the bottom, and then um, the probability of each outcome as um, along the vertical axis. Okay. So when we're talking about um, probability distributions, we're going to use some specific terminology. So just a few definitions here. We are going to talk about the probability of some random variable X. And we're going to use capital X to denote what our random variable is. So what do we mean by a random variable? Well, it's just like it sounds like. It's some variable whose value changes I mean, that's almost 
nonsensical. I mean, you can't have a variable whose value doesn't change because then it's not a variable. But uh, I'm going to say it anyways. Variable whose value changes um, due to, we'll say chance. Basically, the value changes randomly. Okay. So in our dice experiment, um, our random variable was what was appearing on the top of the dice. It changes based randomly. Okay. Now, we're going to want to be a little bit more specific here. A particular kind of random variable is what is called a discrete random variable. We're also going to use capital X to denote that. This is some random variable that can only take on very specific values. That can only take on a finite set of whole numbers. So what do I mean by a finite set? When I say finite, I just mean that it's not infinite, okay? There's only a specific number of numbers that it can take on. A finite set of whole number values. And our dice experiment is an other example, uh, is a good example of a discrete random variable. When we roll our die, we can only get the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We can't get anything in between, and we can't get anything beyond 6. So our dice experiment, we had a discrete random variable. And in this unit, all of the variables that we work with are going to be discrete random variables. Next unit, 10, 11, we're going to start working with continuous random variables. Okay? And you probably guessed a continuous random variable is a random variable that can take on any value. Take on any value. So when I say take on any value, I kind of mean that um, you're allowed to have fractional numbers or decimal numbers or any numbers in between the ones that we usually think of. Okay. Um, it doesn't always necessarily mean that the, the value of the variable can be as high as you want. Okay. It doesn't mean that, that, it, that it goes off to infinity or something like that. So let's just take a look at another example here um, of a simple experiment. Okay. A coin is flipped four times. We want to construct the probability distribution for the number of heads. So in this experiment, um, what is our discrete random variable that we're going to denote by x? What do we think? Discrete random variable. What quantity here um, is able to change due to random chance? Or what are we looking at finding in this experiment? Yeah. yeah. Not just heads, but the number of heads. So that is our variable, the number of heads. Okay. Is this a discrete random variable? Well, what are the possible values of x? Or what are the possible numbers for the number of heads that we can have? Well, if we're flipping this thing four times, we could get 0. We could get 1, 2, 3, or 4. So there's our finite set of whole number of values that our discrete random variable can take on. Now, how many possible outcomes do we have in this experiment? So we've got five possible values of x, but we have a lot more possible outcomes. Because, for instance, we could have um, the out the x could have the value of 2 here, where we have two heads show up. But those two heads could show up at the beginning. They could show up at the end one at the beginning, one at the end, and so on and so on. So how many possible outcomes are there here? Well, we can calculate this because each flip has, sorry, has two possibilities. Those two possibilities are heads and tails. So if we are flipping four times, the number of total possibilities are two 
times 2 times 2 times 2. We have two possibilities for each flip, or 2 to the 4, or 16. So the total number of possible outcomes is the number of elements in our sample space. So let's go ahead and let's work out our probability distribution here. We want to know the probability of getting each of these different values of x, or each of these different number of heads. So our possible values are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And in this bottom row here, we're going to have our probabilities. So we want, in each case, we want the probability that our random variable, capital X, is going to take on some particular value that we're going to denote by small x. So the probability that the number of heads is going to be equal to some specific value, and the specific value that we're interested in are these um, x values, small letter x, across the top here. So we know that because um, 16 is the number of things in our sample space, all of these are going to be fractions out of 16. And for each one of them, we need to figure out the number of ways that we can get that particular event occurring. So the first one is probably kind of easy here. What is the number of ways that we can get zero heads showing up? Just one way. Okay. So there's one way we can get no heads. That's if all of them come up tails, right? What is the number of ways that we can get four heads to show up? Hunter is giving us a one. Why is it one, Hunter? Exactly, because they're all going to be tails. You can't rearrange them or anything like that. Another way of thinking about this is if we have got four heads, how many ways can we arrange them? Or sorry, how many ways can we choose them here? We can do four, choose four, which is one. If we've got no heads, and we've got four possible heads, we want to choose zero of them. Okay, which is 1 over 16. So if we're looking at the number of, uh, if we're, we're looking at the probability of having one head, well, we want to have one head. How many ways can we place that one head amongst our four possible um, uh, coin flips? Well, we've got four possible flips. We want to choose one of them or choose one. So that's going to be 4 over 16 or 1 quarter. If we have two coins turning up heads, how many ways can we arrange them within our four possibilities? Four choose two, which is going to be six choose 16, uh, six over 16. And finally, if we've got three heads, how can we rearrange them among our four coin flips? Four choose three. So again, four over 16. And so we would generally put these in lowest terms. Um, 4 over 16 is 1 quarter, 6 over 16 is 3 over 8. So there's our probability distribution. Okay? 1 over 16, 1 over 4, 3 over 8, 1 over 4, and 1 over 16.